G'day. So, I have got one of these keyboards that has got a bit of an issue. Um, I've had it a couple months. It is a Logitech G213 gaming keyboard. So I paid $50 for this with a mouse. So that's a pretty good price. These usually go for a little bit more. Except um, having issues where you press like C, it'll double tap. Uh, you press V, it won't register. And it seems to affect this part of the keyboard. So like from probably about the control kind of up to up to here, the tilde. So this bottom left hand corner. Now I made the mistake of throwing the receipt out, so I can't return this and RMA it. So we're going to take a look inside and see if we can't figure out what's causing this. So without any further chit chat. Let's pull it apart. Alright, uh, first up, get some bubble bag that we're going to check the buttons with because I don't want to scratch them necessarily. Okay, so let's pull it apart. Just taking note, there's um different size screws in this, got smaller ones down the bottom, bigger ones in the middle, so I'm just putting them in a sequence, matching sequence, just below the camera, so I can put them back in the right ones. Now, is there screws under there, or is that it? Four doesn't really seem like enough. stickers and I'll just get a plastic pry tool you should probably see check online to see if someone's actually done this already ah oh, come on come off ah oh, look at that there is one under there all right I don't want to break that if I do any harder than that. Uh. Oh, gee. And I just saw a bit of plastic fly off. Something in the clip. These are the rubber don't if you haven't pulled a keyboard apart before. If you have, you don't have to. What was it? Here. Yeah. You don't have to comment and say, oh, I don't know how keyboard works. And not everyone does. So you got these rubber domes, and you got three sheets of this plastic, one on the top, which has got stuff printed underneath. A spacer, to create a space between the two pads. So that when you, yeah, you have to have a space you can't stop them pressing against so when you put pressure on there it engages it. See, it looks alright. One thing I was thinking is that if this sheet was like slightly like skew if that might 
cause issues because that little rubber button's not quite it has to be pretty centered in there if it's kind of going to the side or actually look at that that doesn't look like it's lined up properly Let's see if we can see that that's a bit hard um there's like a circle with a cross on each side and the one at the top is definitely not lined up with the one on the bottom I can see that. Let's see if I can do a close up. Hang on. That's a little bit better. So you can see that they're not really lined up. So you've got the top one doesn't line up with the bottom one. So this is the bottom left hand side of the keyboard. If we go up here, you notice it is lined up a little bit better. Uh, let's try and get the angle. It's not heaps better, but it's way better than it is in this corner. So, um, I'm just going to see if I can pull this apart and um, get those little circles with the squares to line up better. Pretty bad, but um, I'm hoping that's all it is. All right, so see you got the little circle with a cross. So two circles with a cross on each side of the mylar sheet with a spacer. So when you push the circle engages with the other. So that's, you can see that's out of line with each other. But if you pull it slightly, the top one, see they line up. That is not how it looked before. So I'm just gonna put some dots of glue. I don't know, one, two, maybe six dots of glue around make those circles all line up with each other. Start in one corner, line up all these, put some there, make sure they're all lined up still. And I'll use Super Glue Gel because it doesn't dry instantly. It gives you, you get about a minute to shuffle it around before it decides to go nut. Nah, it's not moving anymore. So let's do that. All right, so I can see now. Well, I might actually dab that with the soldering on because it's still shifting. I'm not, I'm not happy with it. Right, this is like, um, what would I blame this on? Yeah, that looks like against that. I reckon that's actually, that's in the wrong spot. Well, not, not that it's in the wrong spot, but I can see it's bunching up on this connector when I line all these crosses up. So, 
I don't know. This is a, a quality control issue on um, Logitech's behalf. I'll tell you what. Um, This is a bit of a hacky way to do it, but who cares? It wasn't a picky old keyboard. It was um, yeah, fifty dollars with a mouse. The mouse is actually pretty good. That came with this. I'm actually pretty happy with it. It has one of those buttons on it that you can change the um, resolution. That hurts when I do that. <laughs> Guys, I just want my keyboard working, guys. I kind of need to use it. So, rush, rush. There you go. That's, that's pretty good. Apart from that, punching out. Yeah, well, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so as, as you can see, all those little circles and crosses are lining up. But this is bunching up against this little plastic pole. So it looks like this was causing the problem. It was causing the two sh sheet, because that's for the lower sheet. That's for the upper sheet, so it's causing them to be out of, out of sync with each other. I'm hoping this is what it is. Um, I mean, that was the first thing that was obvious. They were, you saw before they were quite out, so let's put it back together and we'll uh, test it out and I guess time will tell. Okay, so I'm just going to try and relieve the pressure on that because that's not good to leave it like that. All right, so we've got a mining computer. I said, you know, I don't, don't bother with mining content anymore. I've had some weird problems, but um, it's not going to go into it. So. That's good. Let's go. Uh, C was the worst one. It would double. Let's see there. It would double press, and not press. Also, notice you had to press the top of the key for it to work because those obviously those circles were out of alignment. V, V. Yep, I reckon that's fixed it because it did it all that effing time. <laughs> if you've got one of these keyboards, you know what I mean. Like literally every second or third. Button press is like a it either goes <coughs> when you press it once or nothing. Yeah, I reckon we'll fix that. All right, time will tell though. We'll uh, chuck it back on my main desktop and see how it goes.
So we've now fixed our G213. So I'm just going to share some final thoughts on this keyboard. Um, I did some googling before. These keyboards sell for up to $130. And I'm telling you, there is no way this thing is worth that. I mean, it's just a cheap. Uh, cheap I mean, how do you, how do you define cheap, really? It's just a, a like a rubber dome keyboard. If you pull apart any cheap keyboard, like the cheapest Microsoft keyboards and other ones, you'll find exactly the same. There's no mechanical switches. It's just membrane with rubber domes on top. So I don't know. I think that's these things aren't worth that much. There's nothing special about it. I mean, you got volume controls. I mean, every key, the last three keyboards I've had have had volume controls and the audio controls. It's got this game button which turns off like the Windows button if you're gaming yet. Don't accidentally press that. And I don't know, it's backlit, which I do like backlit keyboards, especially when it's dark, but geez, it's not. Is it, is it really worth $130? And the fact I only paid $50 for this with the mouse. Admittedly that was actually on a on a special. But I thought why were they selling it so cheap? Because um, I've Googled before, like Officeworks now sell them for $119. That was the exact same one I got with the mouse for 50 bucks. So as you can see, they go everywhere from uh, 69 to I think JB Hi-Fi is 130. <laughs> wow, Bunnings. Since when do Bunnings sell keyboards? Online, probably. Yeah, anyway, so um, my experience so far with this keyboard, because those buttons have been such a pain in the ass, isn't that great? And they're, you feel them, they're, they're pretty. It's quite noisy as well. Um, again, I think that's attributed to the, the real thinness of that rubber dome material. You notice it was very floppy and flimsy, and I kind of question how long it's actually going to last. Um, it's definitely not the kind of keyboard that's going to last more than you know, five, ten years. I guess that's, that's what they want people to buy stuff more often than not to make money. But um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. It's, it is what it is. So at least it's working. And, um, buttons work, and they no longer double tap. So I think we'll leave it at that for now. So um, any thoughts? Leave a comment and. Other than that, I'll catch you next time.